Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the DS923 Plus from Synology. They sent this over to me so I could take a look at it and share it with you. So let's just jump into this, take a look around the chassis, and then we'll get into some of the details. On the front, we're going to see four drive bays and status lights for each of the drives, as well as a status light for the device itself. We've also got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port for connecting external USB storage or other compatible devices. Right below the USB ports, we've got a little power button with just a little bit of branding below that. The sides are both pretty sparse other than the Synology branding. The back of the device sports two 92 millimeter fans for cooling, as well as dual one gig NICs and an eSATA port for attaching the optional DX517 expansion unit for more drives and of course, more storage. Also, don't forget the recessed reset button in case you need it for whatever reason. Below that, we've got a power port for the 100 watt power supply. And we've also got an expansion slot for an optional 10 gig RJ45 network card. Lastly, we've got another USB 3.2 Gen 1 port and a Kensington lock. If we take a look at the bottom, we've got a couple of NVMe drives for cache or storage, depending on how you set that up. Next, we're gonna take a look at the inside of the device uh, after removing the drive base, of course. Now there's not really much going on here other than this is where you'll upgrade your RAM as needed. The 923, along with a lot of the other devices, comes with four gigs of RAM, but does support up to 32 gigs. We've got an AMD Ryzen R1600 CPU powering the device. And while the Ryzen CPU is 64 bit with a 2.6 and 3.1 gig base and boost clock respectively, it is only a two gig CPU, which in my opinion leaves a little bit on the table since this appears to be the only Ryzen embedded processor in this class without Vega graphics. By simply upgrading to the 1606G, we could have had the same 12 to 25 watt TDP, two cores, four threads, base and boost clocks, but again, with the Vega 3 graphics. And I feel like we kind of maybe missed the mark there. Getting the drives installed and getting the device's initial setup only took a few minutes from the time I opened the box until I was set up and ready to log in to the DSM dashboard. To go through the setup process, I use the DSM Finder app on my phone just to keep things as simple as possible. And with the DS Finder app, you can manage your Synology devices with an easy to use design uh, that lets you do everything from getting system information and notifications to managing your Synology system updates. You can even use the app to navigate the folder and file structure of your Synology and even update the apps on the device. The setup process installed DSM 7.1.1 and set the drives in Synology Hybrid RAID with BTRFS for the file system. Now, I immediately installed a couple of my go-to apps like Docker and Plex, and you could, of course, install any number of other apps or packages, as they're called in the Package Center, based on whatever your needs might be for the 923 Plus. Now, obviously, I installed Plex to see how it would handle playing media on my local network, and I installed Docker so that I could uh, install iPerf3 to make sure that I was able to get full speeds on the network ports. Now, we'll come back to the media playback tests in a moment, but I was easily able to saturate the one gig ports with no issues or hiccups along the way. Now, coming back to the media playback, the media files that I played were a mix of H.264 and H.265 videos that all played without issue. Now, I will say that this is all being played on my local network, so there wasn't any transcoding going on to play the files on my laptop or TVs, which left the CPU usage under 20% pretty consistently. And honestly, it was even closer to zero once the video had been running for a while. Now, I did do some testing uh, with some transcoding and noticed that while doing that, uh, it definitely did peg out the CPU at like 99 to 100%. So you may want to do what you can on your network settings and your, your, your video settings to make sure that you're doing the least amount of transcoding possible, especially if you're going to have multiple people accessing this server simultaneously as it will just, uh, anything more than a single transcoding session will absolutely peg out the CPU and kind of make it impossible for anyone to watch anything else uh, at the same time. So just something to kind of think about there. Now, I mentioned earlier that I installed Docker on the device so that I could run an iPerf3 test on the network cards, but because we can install Docker, we've got a huge number of options for additional applications that we can install on the device to make it do basically whatever we want it to do. So just a quick little side note here that I'm not sure if some of you know or not, but I spent more than a year using my DS1621XS+, Plus, which was also uh, supplied by Synology, uh, as a virtual machine host where I had OpenMediaVault installed for the tutorials that I was making at the time 
on this channel. Now, that said, one of the packages that I've got installed on my DS 1621XS Plus uh, is one that I would probably skip on the 923 Plus, and that's the Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, while the 1621 has a Xeon processor with a bunch of cores, again, the 923 has a Ryzen processor with two cores and four threads. So your ability to run anything more than like a low-powered VM it's gonna be pretty limited without overworking the CPU. Now, of course, you could install uh, things like Hyper Backup to back up your folders, system settings, and software packages from your Synology NAS, or you might be interested in something like Active Backup for Business, where you can manage backup tasks for your uh, physical and virtual environments from a centralized dashboard to keep your data and services always available. Something that I'm going to harp on just a little bit here um, is that whether you're installing native apps or Docker containers or whatever the case is, make sure you do some research on the hardware requirements of either those containers or those VMs uh, to make sure that you don't uh, unintentionally overload the CPU in this device. So what are my overall thoughts on the DS923 Plus? If you're looking for a smallish form factor NAS device to store your files, photos, and media that can support local playback via Plex or similar apps, the 923 is a really great device. While it comes with a 100 watt power supply, the power consumption listed on the website is about 35 watts under load and only about 11 watts at idle with the drives in hibernation. One of the things that I've always really liked about Synology devices is that they are mostly quiet. Um, unless of course you've got the fans set to ramp up, at which point they will let you know that they're there. As per usual, I will have links in the video description if you'd like to learn more about this device or pick one of these up for yourself. Please do me a favor and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on Synology or more specifically the DS923+. Plus. But with all of that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.